Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. We have a list of 27 homes. And so I was away yesterday. I was at uh, my good friend's cottage and took the kids, had a great time. But we're back. And so what we're doing is we're reviewing everything that happened on the weekend. And then we're also looking at, uh, let me just order these by price, um, anything that happened in the last 24 hours. So it takes us back basically until Friday is everything that's listed from then until now. Now, as you're planning your fall, if moving and selling your house is part of those plans, then we have a book here called A Room by Room Review, and it's a very useful guide to help you get your home ready. And, and so we really boiled down some of the best things we noticed from those homes you admire on home and garden television to model homes, everything like that. And we, we set it off as room by room. And it was also advice we were giving our clients too. And so the most important part of this book is the last page where it's separated. I don't know if you can see that, but it's separated into three columns, which is the must do, the could do, and the don't do. And the don't do I find is the list where we spend the most amount of time. So if you'd like either the book or if you'd like us to come over and give you some advice about what to do, uh, you can find the room by room. It'll either be, if you look at it on a mobile device, it'll be in offers and it'll be up there. Or uh, if you see it on, on a desktop, it'll be somewhere over on that side there. So just fill in the form or just reach out to us, respond to any email we send. Let's get started with today's list. Now, I don't know if this would have been the power shot that I would have used for this building, 81 mil side, to have a picture of a a dark picture of a master bedroom is the first one, but the price 270 is good for a two bedroom, two washroom. It's really the cheapest way to get into a home of this size, more than a thousand square feet. So we're talking about $270 a square foot, maybe even 250 a square foot. Compare that to green life where we're now more than $400 a square foot. The, uh, the condo fees are a bit higher, 612, but if you notice it includes heat, hydro, cable TV, it's, it, you know, for what you get on these condo fees, I would take a building this age at these fees instead of like a two year old building with $400, $450 where you don't have any of that stuff included in. Uh, again, the unit is uh, nothing to write home about, although the bathroom looks pretty good. The kitchen, um, you know, has newer cabinets. You could paint them, there's stainless steel appliances. There's a lot of things here that I think are really, really good for someone and different than across the street at 100 mil side, which is kind of known as a bit of a superior building is this one has balconies, that one does not. I like this one a lot. And this is kind of what I meant by Natalyn Heights, 369.9. So we're now talking $100,000 more you're getting a smaller unit, 800 to 899, and you're getting maintenance fees of mid 350. So again, that would be $400 if it was the same size as uh, as Millside. Yes, you get more modern finishes, but I I could go into Millside and I could do stuff like this, and it wouldn't cost me $100,000. It wouldn't even cost me close to that. And uh, same thing, two bedroom, two washroom. So I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the way this building feels. Everything is eight foot ceilings. The floors are a little creaky because it's basically wood frame construction in a condo. And I worry about the safety of that if there was ever a fire. But it's cheaper to build. And as we know, certain builders out there uh, are more concerned with the visual appearance and making sure the bottom line matters than you know structurally if it's really built well. But that's uh, that's kind of a sign of the times for 2016, a little more style than substance, unfortunately. So one last note about the one we saw in Natalyn Heights, there was a message in, in the description and it said uh, sellers willing to stay on as a tenant. Now there's legitimate needs why people move and it would be you know job re relocation or, or uh, family growing and so they need more space. but. What's interesting about that one is that it, it basically kind of points in a possible direction of financial needs. So in other words, it's like, we like where this is, but we can't afford to live here, uh, or they need to extract some equity or something like that. Uh, that's what I find more often than not happens when you see that little comment. So sometimes in an effort to be helpful, so what some agents actually do is they give away information about a seller's motivation. 
And there's two schools of thought about that. Either you just kind of are honest about the story and say, we need to sell this home because of this, uh, or you don't. You keep your cards close to your chest. And there's pros and cons to both, uh, but the seller has to feel comfortable either way with the approach. Pitfield, $400,000, four bedrooms, which is pretty rare. It's uh, not easy to find a good four bedroom condo town and easily this is the cheapest way to get a four bedroom home anywhere in town. Even with this plus the 339 maintenance fees. Uh, condo towns this time last year, I would say probably could have picked this one up for, you know, 330, 340, 350. And because it's 2016, everything's cranked up, you're looking a lot more. So very nicely kept. I wouldn't be surprised if this one crept up to 410, 420. I, it just it wouldn't surprise me. Some of the three bedrooms, the one we saw last week on Wilson, those ones have started to go into the fours. And, uh, and this one has a real chance of doing well. October 11th, 2016 is the possession. Uh, obviously that becomes important in negotiating or when you're battling in competition, one offer gives a higher price, but you give this day. Some sellers prefer the convenience, sometimes even to getting a few extra thousand dollars. This is a nice one too. So 352 Bustle, it is the Carlton model. We always have to do that dance whenever we see a Carlton model. Uh, it's, I mean, stuff like this, like it's just bad. Like you don't really, like you have to turn the picture sideways. I don't know. It's. It's a good price for the home. The other thing we talk about too is if you look at the price, it's five hundred eight eighty-eight. That's eight hundred and eighty-eight dollars higher than a double bracket exposure at five hundred thousand dollars, where you're the last home in the list from uh, four seventy-five to five hundred, and you're the first one from five hundred to five fifty. I just think from a marketing perspective, adding that eight eighty-eight just doesn't make any sense it really doesn't especially when you're holding back on offers and the value of this home could crank it uh, a lot higher than 500 why wouldn't you expose to two price ranges instead of just one now if you look at 745 farmstead which is later on this list it's the same builder as this one on ferguson uh, this one's a bit bit older on ferguson but the potential for this one selling way higher than 525 is definitely there uh, you've got a good solid floor plan, about 1,500 square feet, plus a finished basement, plus you back onto woods. And there's a small uh, maintenance fee for gar or for garbage removal and snow removal. And yeah, this one really is quite nice. I mean, that to me, like even better than green space is having the privacy behind it's uh, it's a lovely home, and I think it has potential to be way up in uh, in the fives. So sixty twenty dairy apparently doesn't have a unit number, and it should. So it'd be interesting to see if agents book showings on this and then showed up and couldn't find it. Uh, although sometimes the agent sign outside is the one thing that helps. Now uh, there's some nice things I like about this one, but the pictures look like they were taken by Shaquille O'Neal. They're all like way up high, like basically like banging your head on the light fixtures. Everything is high, high, high. I don't know if that gives the best impression of space in a home like this. 34 Dills is kind of an interesting home because we've got uh, the price 599 for a detached. Anything under 600,000 is good. It's on a 22 foot lot. I'm in the process of selling a semi-detached home on a 30-foot lot. So you can see it's detached, but look how close it is to the neighbors. And we see this in Toronto too, as people brag about a detached home, but you can barely fit a, a dog or a cat in between the homes. And so you've got a bit of a deeper lot here too, but the home is very long and narrow. When you have 22 feet, you figure the garage is 10 feet. You need a little bit of setback on either side which means the, the biggest this house can be at the widest point on the main floor is maybe 10 feet. And when you get into a semi with a 30 foot lot, you start to be able to change the way the rooms are configured out. So that's the thing about this one is it probably is in, in a bit of a lower category. This looks like ice, it's so shiny and smooth. Um, I, here's the other thing, I don't get when you can spend thousands of dollars on a countertop 
and put really nice appliances in and have, pardon my French, a shitty $5 light in the kitchen. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's the first time I've swore in uh, daily homes. And why not? Why not make it now? Now, Sievert's going to attract uh, people looking for a double garage because anything in the low sevens with the double garage tends to attract a lot of attention. It's only like 16 something square feet. So you have a kitchen here and you, it's big enough you could put like an eat in area. I think this area is better served as a pantry, as extra space uh, that doesn't really infringe on your eat in area. But basically, what you have is this plus that. That's it. There's no dining room. It's just one open space. And we just had clients that scooped up a home that's like 600, 700 square feet larger than this for the same price. So while we've seen the single car garages go right up into the sevens, by the way, that light should match the same color as the other two. Again, small things that you have to look at when you're selling a house because it gives the impression that, hey, like they don't pay attention to the lights. What else don't they pay attention to? But I, um, I just think for this size, I see other options in the marketplace that will give someone more square footage for the same money. I like this one on Ruddy Crescent, although I'm really getting picky today, but like Christmas lights can come down, like especially like when they're drooping on this little crest right here, take them down before selling. It's not a big deal. It's a good floor plan. They've got some decent finishes in here. Uh, it says it's a custom kitchen. Uh, I would say that this one looks better than most of the kitchens that we see. It's a little bit more of a modern finish where you don't really have any uh, depth. It's just a straight cabinet. And they've got a wine fridge over here too. Uh, and then you've got a pie shaped lot. So, so it's like the most important room in the house is done what looks like very well. And you've got a lot, although the description says it's 34 in the front, widening. I, I just think all you need to say is, look, man, this lot is like big and, and just and show the aerial and have like a picture that maybe shows that uh, the dimensions. Um, you're looking at a school back here, too. So that that might change the impression. But overall, I would say this one has a lot of things that to me would make it worth uh, at least what they're asking. Now, I'm not going to talk about the house, but what I for, what first came to mind when I saw this address one, two, three, four is that Coolio song. Guelph Line, million fifty eight. And if you look at where it is, it's uh, this right here. So you're like five houses north of Guelph and 15th. Great school district surrounded by estate properties. These are all like one, two acre homes, usually more than 3,000 square feet. Uh, the thing about this one though, even in those estate subdivisions, when those homes are right beside Guelph Line, they sit around for a long time. And you have 150 by 131 foot lot. That's pretty small. And it's also, that's the road right there. So I, I understand they've spent money on, on the pool and they've got this big garage and they have all these beautiful things that they've done in the house. Is somebody going to want to live that close to Guelph Line? Which there was a time when Guelph Line was basically horse-drawn carriages all day long and farm equipment. Now it's really the gateway to the north for a lot of different communities, a lot of estate subdivisions, uh, Brookville Public School. It'll be noisy. And it's like, do you want to pay a million dollars to be beside a busy road? This is a tough sell to be in this location for this home. Put it in a bit or even put it on 15th side road. It, it, the impression difference is huge. And even 15th is busy, but it's not as busy as Guelph Line. So this one at 5,500 steals, uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, at one point, I think they were asking $5 million. They were at 3.2, I think earlier this year. Dropped it down to 295, uh, I think in June or July or something like that. And then now they've just put a new listing out with four days on the market. You'd think at four days on the market, they would have had a chance to put pictures on. Uh, I think that should be done at zero days on the market. But anyway, it's 6,400 square feet. It's on 13.9 acres. 
if you assume that the that you have a value of a land, you have a value of a house, and so the the land, um, it says two point five acres of your own lawns, uh, twelve acres of private forest and fond and pond, not fond. Most of the value is in the first few acres, right? But you've got, so let's say 14 acres, there's gonna be a per acre of at least a couple hundred thousand dollars. I would say for the land and the proximity to town, the land, let's call it a million bucks. I could be off on that. And then you say 6,400 square feet, and then what's the price per square foot to build something like this? And with this quality, it's at least 200 a square foot. So it means that you're looking at, you know, one three, one four to uh, to build it. Now, if if the land is in fact worth 1.5, then that doesn't put you too far from the uh, the value of this home. If they could prove, if the sellers could prove through the quality and the finishes and how much it actually costs to build this. The replacement cost might even be more and that's what we tend to find with homes of this size the value is actually less than it would cost to put a new home in just because there's it's almost like a depreciating asset but it's just generally the whole in this case is sometimes worth less than the sum of its parts just the way it goes anyway that's uh that's our list for today so if you have any questions reach out to us give us a call and we're here to help have a great day